everybody, Justin here to do my 2018 WWE Hall of Fame review. It was a good show. There were other years that I enjoyed a lot more, but it was a good class. I enjoyed seeing Jeff Jarrett go in, Goldberg, Ivory, Mark Henry. And the Dudleys. Those are who I enjoyed the most. And the others, the kid, he was uh, very entertaining. He was funny. The kid made me laugh. But I didn't care about Kid Rock. Really at all. So here's, I just, I enjoyed other Hall of Fames a lot more, like... 2004, 2005, 2006, and many other years. A year Ric Flair went in twice. The year Sting went in. The year Ricky Steamboat went in. I mean, there's been so many Hall of Fames. I don't remember every Hall of Fame, but there were a lot more. That were better than this year's. But it was still good. My only complaint. I'm not going to bitch and cry and moan. About Kid Rock going in. Big deal. He went in. Because he's a, he's a celebrity. He also has worked with WWE a lot. In the past. He's a friend of the company. That's why he got put in. So up first was the Dudley Boys. The Dudleys get inducted into the WWE Hall of Fame. The first ECW Originals to get in the Hall of Fame. Before I talk about the Dudleys, my only complaint, it's not Kid Rock. Big deal, he went in, get over it. My complaint is the show was over four hours. It was way too long. I'm the biggest WWE fan there is. And when Goldberg was talking, I was started to think, let's wrap it up. Come on, Goldberg. It's time to go home and end the show. I believe it ended at, like, after 11 p.m. here. I think it ended like close to 11.30. Or right before 11.30. The show was over four hours. Way too long. Next year, please. Have the Hall of Fame be at least... Have it go three and a half hours. Not four hours. Or have it go three hours. Anyways, the Dudleys kick it off. Edge and Christian... Induct them. That's a good choice. But it could have been Spike Dudley. Could have been Tommy Dreamo. The Dudleys. I believe Devon. Brought up Spike Dudley. And in the beginning. The Dudleys. Speech in the beginning. They were like. Fighting with each other. Arguing. I even wrote a tweet. On Twitter, I said, do these guys get along anymore? Because it didn't seem like it, but they were just busting each other's balls and having fun. I'm sure they get along. I mean, how could you not? Yeah, when you're tag team partners with another guy for over 20 years, you're going to get in arguments and fights. You're going to get sick of being around each other, but you can tell... Bubba Ray, Devon, you can tell. They are like real brothers. So the Dudleys bring up Spike Dudley. I believe Devon brought him up first and said, Spike, and I agree, Spike, that guy got beat up so much and took so much punishment and still kept getting up. Spike Dudley, one of the toughest guys ever in wrestling. If I made a top five toughest wrestlers list, Spike Dudley would be on my top five toughest ever wrestlers. He would be on there, McFoley be on there, 
probably a few others. Spike Dudley, the, the guy, the guy took a ton of punishment from the Dudleys in ECW. Got bashed in the head of chairs. He got power bomb through tables from Sid and other Mike Awesome. Then he got uh, put through flaming tables by the Dudleys. His so-called brothers put him through a flaming tables. So shout out to Spike Dudley. That guy is tough. He was so damn tough. I respect the hell out of Spike Dudley. The Dudleys also brought up Tommy Dreamer. How he really helped them. Especially Devon. Said Tommy Dreamer really, really helped him. When he was broke and no money, Tommy Dreamer helped him a lot. And good for Tommy Dreamer. He's a great guy. He gives back to a lot of wrestlers. He has his own company. He's still giving back. He's still... He is still giving other wrestlers an opportunity with his company, House of Hardcore. He's still giving wrestlers an opportunity. To make a living. And paying them. To be on his shows. I don't know how much he pays them. To make a living but. I'm sure they're paid pretty. Decently. I would hope. So. I mean. I don't think there's any wrestler. That is a bad thing to say about Tommy Dreamer. That guy. First off for the fans. Tommy Dreamer. He wasn't put in the Hall of Fame, but I'm going to talk about him. Because I love Tommy Dreamer. I respect the hell out of him. Tommy Dreamer was a heart and soul of ECW. Tommy Dreamer broke his back for ECW. Literally. Had broken vertebrae. Broke his back, I believe, twice. And Tommy Dreamer, another guy that... Could go on the top five toughest wrestlers ever. Because he took a ton of punishment. And he kept getting up. And coming back. And coming, never missing. Never taking time off for injuries. I mean, once in 97. Tommy Dreamer had a broken foot. Broken heel. And he just wrestled with a boot on. For like months and months he wrestled with a boot on. And had a broken bone in his foot. So Dudley shout out Spike. Dudley that was cool. They shout out Edge and Christian. They shout out the Hardys. And they shouted out Tommy Dreamer. They also shouted out the Acolytes. The APA. And then. This, this is uh, great. Great. The Dudleys decide to bring out Edge and Christian and Matt Jeff Hardy are all on the stage. All six guys. The guys that took the ladder match to another level. The tag team ladder match. They took it to another level when they were in the first ever TLC matches. The Dudleys, the Hardys, Edge and Christian in the Attitude Era they they definitely carried the tag division. They were tag team wrestling and they were all awesome at it. So then the Dudley's music starts playing like they're getting played off the stage. That kind of pissed me off. But then I knew it was a setup and it was a storyline. This guy comes out like he's a a production assistant or something working on the show telling them I'm sorry I'm sorry but you gotta wrap it up he's going like this Bubba grabs him like he's gonna uh, knock him out and then Bubba pushes Devon get the tables Devon comes out with a table and they put this guy through the table on the stage at the Hall of Fame that was awesome that was really good so up next was Jimmy Hart inducting Hillbilly Jim. Any fans watching this that were not around in the late 80s, if you weren't alive, well, let me tell you something. 
I was really young, but I was alive. I was not a huge Hillbilly Jim fan at all. I was not a big fan of his, but I liked him. I cheered for him. In Hillbilly Jim, in the WWF in the late 80s, Hillbilly Jim was really super over. The guy had a great character. The guy was loved by fans. The guy was in the rock and wrestling cartoon. He was a big star. He was part of WrestleMania 2 and 3. He was a part of. WrestleMania 4, Hillbilly Jim might have been a part of. The WrestleMania 4 Battle Royal, I don't remember. But after Hillbilly Jim retired from the ring, he worked backstage in the WWE. He might even worked in the office, I'm not sure. But he worked for years and years for a Coliseum video for the WWF. And the guy, no wrestlers like Tommy Dreamer. I don't believe any wrestlers in the business have a bad thing to say about Hillbilly Jim. He's a really good guy. You can tell he's a really nice guy. He'll talk to fans. He's just a really, really nice guy. So Hillbilly Jim, Jimmy Hart brought him out. Another Hall of Famer, Jimmy Hart. The guy's great. The guy's a genius. Because he wrote Shawn Michaels' Sexy Boy theme and he wrote a lot of other themes. So Hillbilly Jim, the guy had a great speech. I thought it went on kind of long. But he, he could go as long as he wants. Any of these Hall of Famers could. They deserve to go as long as they want. Hillbilly Jim had a good speech. The guy seemed really super grateful for just becoming a superstar. He seemed really super grateful. He thanked a lot of people. He talked about a lot of a lot of wrestlers that are no longer with us, sadly. One of them, Roddy Piper. And uh, I agree with Hillbilly Jim. I still, I still can't believe Roddy Piper is gone. Doesn't feel real. And just a damn, damn, damn shame. When Roddy Piper passed away, it was uh, shocking. And it was just damn sad. And uh, I still think about Roddy Piper. And when I see him on the network, it's uh, very tragic. Dead. He didn't get to live into his 80s or 70s. So uh, rest in peace, Hot Rod. He, he brought up Rick Rude. Brought up, brought up a lot of guys that have passed away. Good speech from Hillbilly Jim. I enjoyed it. Up next was Molly Holly. She looked great. She was inducting Ivory. Molly Holly, just for me, I thought she looked her best when she had blonde hair. When it was longer, I thought she looked the best. Especially in WCW and then when she came to WWF and she had the long blonde hair, I thought she was very attractive. She's still attractive. But... Uh, she could grow her hair a little longer. Because I don't like women with real short hair. I'm not saying I never have a chance with Molly Holly. I'm sure she's married. But I don't like, I don't date women with short hair. Anyways. Like you care. You shouldn't. And you shouldn't care either. So Molly Holly brings out Lillian Garcia. To announce Ivory onto the stage as pretty damn cool. Lillian Garcia looks great. She's very attractive. I can't believe Lillian's like over 50 years old. She looks stunning. She's gorgeous. And Ivory. She's very attractive. I was... uh very attracted to Ivory as a teenager. 
watching her during the Attitude Era. Somehow she got hotter from like 2003 to 2005, 6. She got hotter looking. Uh, maybe, I don't know, maybe it's a boob job. She did have a boob job, I believe, in like 2001 or 2. Maybe that made me more attracted to her. I don't know, but Ivory, gorgeous face and gorgeous body, and she was a great worker. Most importantly, she was a great wrestler and a great worker. She gave back to the business, helped out a lot of the younger women that were in the locker room. She's part of history. Ivory was a part of the original GLOW, Gorgeous Ladies of Wrestling. They called themselves a women's company. And it was revolutionary, but it wasn't for me. Because the wrestling was not very good at all. It was just like characters based. Just made up wrestling characters. That's what GLOW was. It wasn't any damn good wrestling ever in it. It wasn't ever any kind of good women's wrestling like we have today in... Um, WSU, Shimmer, Stardom, companies like that, Shine, they have way better women's wrestling than Glow ever, ever did. And Glow, I don't consider Glow even a wrestling company. They were like entertainment. They definitely were not women's wrestling. I don't consider Glow women's wrestling. But if you like Glow, good for you. I don't have anything against it. I just wasn't a fan. So Ivory comes out. As I said, she looked great. For her age, she looks damn sexy. And some on Twitter were complaining. She was babbling on like a ant, like a drunk ant. So what? She could talk as long as she wants. And she said no guy would ever marry her. Well, Ivory, I would marry you in a second. I definitely would marry you in a second. You look great. And when you look like that, to me, age doesn't matter. Because she's a lot older than me. But age wouldn't matter to me because Ivory looks great. So congratulations, Ivory. She had a great career. I think she's a three-time women's champion. So, uh, Ivory's speech was pretty good. Go back, listen to it. It was kind of weird when she was talking about, I'm getting married and these are my bridesmaids and stuff like that. So, up next we had Triple H induct Kid Rock. It was rumored Stone Cold Steve Austin might induct Kid Rock, but he didn't. Triple H puts in Kid Rock. Kid Rock didn't have much to say. He said, I'm going to leave it really short. Thank God he left it short. Because I didn't really want to hear him talk. But Kid Rock said a lot of good things. Not the part about body slamming Democrats. That was stupid. He should have never brought up politics. But Kid Rock said a lot of good stuff. Talked about the fans. I don't have a problem with Kid Rock. I don't have any hatred towards the guy. I don't know the guy. I never met the guy. And I'm not going to lie. I'll admit it. I liked some Kid Rock music. Back in 99, 2000, I liked Kid Rock's music. American Badass song, I liked it. A couple other songs he did. Cowboy, I liked it. I think a few others. So again... A lot of people are hating on Kid Rock, especially on Twitter. And you can hate on him all you want, but I don't have a reason to hate the guy. If he's a Trump supporter, that's his prerogative. Who gives a rat's ass if he's a Trump supporter? That's his problem. I just, I don't know. Then no, no, I... People messaging me that saying Kid Rock's a racist. I don't know that. 
I don't know he's a racist. I'm I'm not a friends with the guy. I've never been around the guy. How would I know if he's a racist? You're going to call a kid rock a racist because he voted for Trump? You can't call him a racist for that. You could call him a stupid dumbass for that, but he's not a racist for that. I don't know. I don't know why people are calling him a racist. I don't... I've never heard anywhere from anybody interviews anything I've never heard anybody accuse Kid Rock of being a racist I don't know where that came from maybe the guy is but I never heard of I never heard he was and uh I've heard Kid Rock be interviewed a lot especially by Howard Stern and he never pissed me off in his interviews even though he voted for Trump I don't agree with that that's very stupid if you did but from uh I never heard Kid Rock make any racial remarks so I don't know where people got he's racist from I don't believe the guy's a racist So, yeah, you could be upset at Kid Rock and jealous that I guess the guy's a rich kid growing up. His family's really rich. Who gives a rat's ass? Who cares? So, Triple H puts in Kid Rock. At least his speech was short and sweet. That's all I gotta say about that. Dana Warrior, the Warrior Award. Now, a lot of people like want to attack Kid Rock, and that's your opinion. You have the right to attack him for going in the Hall of Fame. But, if you want to attack somebody, you should attack the Ultimate Warrior. I don't care if the guy's dead. The guy was a scumbag asshole. The guy's an asshole scumbag of a person. The guy's a scum. And he was a douchebag also. He didn't care about the business. He just, in my opinion, was in it for the money. He didn't care about his opponents. He didn't put anybody over, ever, except Rick Rude, but probably because he's forced to. I'm talking about later in Warrior's career. Warrior wouldn't put anybody over. The guy, my opinion, Warrior, that guy was a real racist and a homophobic asshole. And just an idiot. His, uh, the things he would say in interviews, just a total asshole. That uh, I think karma came back to you, Warrior, and that's why you passed away at a young age. Warrior, in one interview, I believe... Wished uh, Bobby Heenan get cancer. Or get his cancer back. That's totally out of line. So Warrior was a, Warrior was a true asshole. You want to hate on someone? Hate on the ultimate Warrior. D because, I don't know, Kid Rock didn't do anything to you. But, I don't know if Ultimate Warrior did anything to you either. But, Warrior is a... It's a fact. The Ultimate Warrior was a piece of shit, dumbass, douchebag. So Dana Warrior Ward, I felt bad for Dana Warrior because she kept breaking down and crying. Because she did lose her husband in New Orleans, right, like four years ago. So those memories are probably coming back to her where she still had her husband alive. And she's sitting in the front row four years ago watching him on the stage going to the Hall of Fame. I went to put Warrior in the Hall of Fame. I was never a fan of the guy. He didn't deserve to be in the Hall of Fame. But I will admit Warrior was a huge star for WWF. And for Vince, he was a huge star. Made Vince a lot of money. That's why he got put in. I don't even think Vince got him in the Hall of Fame. Triple H 
is probably the one that reached out to Warrior and got him in there. Even though I don't even think Warrior liked Triple H because he buried him at WrestleMania 12. Dana Warrior, the, the Warrior Award goes to uh, JJ, the kid. Javaris, I think that's how you pronounce his name, Javaris. The kid is very funny. He said, there's, a, he was talking about, there's a, some of his favorites. He said, there's Roman Reigns, one of my favorites. Crowd started booing Roman, and the kid went like this. The kid started going, no, no, don't do that, don't do that, that's my friend. And, uh, then the kid brought up, says, there's John Cena. He doesn't have a match at WrestleMania, something like that, but I'm up here, something like that. The kid was just pretty damn funny. and made me laugh. When that kid's older, he should be a stand-up comedian. Or he should try to do stand-up. So up next was the big show inducting the world's strongest man, Mark Henry. Uh, Jeff Jarrett. I want to talk about Jeff Jarrett. I skipped over him. Jeff Jarrett was inducted by Road Dog. And it was uh, great to see Jeff Jarrett back on WWE TV. He brought up Owen Hart. He was uh, emotional about Owen because they did travel the roads for a pretty long time. A couple months. They were tag partners. Or more than a couple months probably. But I mean Jeff probably knew Owen Hart since he came into the company in 90, late 94. Or 93 came into the company, I believe. Or late 93, I think. Or maybe 94. So, anyways, Jeff had a good speech. It wasn't great. Jeff should have brought up and said, I, I uh, like seeing AJ Styles here in the front row. Bobby Roode here, Samoa Joe here. And then he could have said, I helped. I, I don't know. I don't know if they told Jeff, don't bring up TNA, don't bring up Impact. I doubt they would say that to him. Because Jeff Jarrett, like him or hate him, is a wrestler. Just think about this. Jeff Jarrett ran TNA, was the boss, and gave guys like AJ, Bobby Roode, Small Joe, Eric Young... James Storm. Jeff Jarrett gave so many wrestlers, so many talented, damn good wrestlers, an opportunity in TNA when WWE didn't want them. Jeff Jarrett gave them opportunities. He's giving back to the business a lot. Jeff Jarrett was never a main eventer. He shouldn't have been world heavyweight champion ever. But we have uh, Vince Russo to thank for that. That's why he got the world title. Because he was friends with Vince Russo at the time. They're not friends anymore. I doubt it. But. Jeff Jarrett. Like him or hate him. The guy is. Given his life. Over 30 years to wrestling. And when his career is done. In the ring. He, he gave back. When he started TNA with his father. So a lot of people don't like Jeff Jarrett. But I respect the hell out of him. So up next. Big Show inducted Mark Henry. Mark Henry. Was crying a lot. Mark Henry is uh, really emotional. Mark Henry actually grew up a big wrestling fan. I did not know that. I didn't know that. But now I know. And it's good to know. Makes me like him more. I liked him before, but now that I knew Mark Henry grew up a wrestling fan like I did, I like him even more. Mark Henry put a robe on, became sexual chocolate. That was damn funny. 
started talking to Stephanie as sexual chocolate. He also uh, thanked, this was cool, Mark Henry thanked Mae Young and China. That was cool. Good speech by the world's strongest man, Mark Henry. Um, next was the headliner of the Hall of Fame, the main eventer, Bill Goldberg. Excuse me, Goldberg. The headliner of the 2018 WWE Hall of Fame, Paul Heyman, inducted Goldberg. Goldberg, before he came out, they knocked on his door and we saw the Goldberg entrance from backstage. That was pretty damn cool. That was cool and fun to see. So Goldberg comes out from backstage, but there was no pyro. There probably should have been. Paul Heyman... Very short introduction, but that was good. And then Goldberg in the beginning says, I'm going to keep this very, very short. Well, you lied. <laughs> you lied to us. I think Goldberg talked to like over 35 minutes, I think. It felt like over 35, 40 minutes. Goldberg thanked Hogan. For giving him the world title, putting him over. Goldberg says, thanks, Hogan. I owe you one. And then, about Kevin Nash and how WCW started to crumble. In my opinion, WCW started to really crumble after Goldberg lost at Star K98 to Kevin Nash. That was a bad, 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 bad idea. He should have never lost to Kevin Nash. I guess Nash was a booker at the time. I don't know. But Nash put himself over the streak. Stupid idea. Because look what they did with the title. Nothing. After Kevin Nash won it, they did the finger poke of doom. That was just stupid. I don't know why they did that. Why would they do that finger poke of doom just so Hollywood Hogan could be world champion again? It still makes no sense to me. It seems like they wanted WCW to go under. Like Nash and Hogan wanted it to go under because they were just, I don't know, bullshitting around playing politics and they thought it was a good idea. Maybe it made them laugh. So they thought, let's do it on Nitro. I I don't have a clue why they did the finger poke of doom. And I'll never get it. Goldberg's still been champion. Into 1999, he should have still been champion. Most of 99. But uh, Goldberg says very... Just Goldberg seemed pretty angry about uh, Kevin Nash ending his streak... This was a shoot. Kevin Nash, I don't think, was even there. I think he's at a WrestleMania block party. I don't think Kevin Nash was in the house. But Goldberg was pretty pissed, says Nash. Nash, Kevin Nash decided to end my streak. And then he goes, thanks, thanks a lot. I owe you one, I guess. You could tell Goldberg was pissed about it. And I'd be pissed, too. Because it's totally stupid to end the streak like they did. That was just beyond stupid. You... I don't even want to think about what they did, but... Because I'll get angry all over again, but... You had the, this monster baby face... Carrying the company... Goldberg was carrying WCW on his back. He was keeping it afloat. He was keeping fans watching. That's my opinion. He kept fans watching. Or his WCW would have been absolutely killed in the ratings a lot sooner from Raw. You have Goldberg, monster babyface, undefeated. World Heavyweight Champion, you get have him get shocked by a cattle prod stick 
by from Scott Hall. That was dumb as hell. And then he gets power bombed and loses. Bad idea. That was just beyond stupid. To end Goldberg's streak was beyond stupid. Just totally asinine. Should have never happened. So very sarcastically, Goldberg says, Kevin Nash, ending my streak. Thanks, I owe you one. So then Goldberg brought it up. Goldberg brings up Stone Cold Steve Austin. Time out, he copied his look. And, uh, I don't know. Goldberg seemed like he might have heat. I don't know. Like if he has he heat with Scott Austin. I don't know if Goldberg has uh, heat with Stone Cold, but it seemed like they don't like each other. I don't know why. It was just weird that Goldberg brought up Stone Cold. Seemed like he's kind of angry about Stone Cold having the same look as him. Well, Stone Cold had the look first. Goldberg, uh, think about it. Stone Cold had the look first. You don't know that? 96. Stone Cold had his bald head, black tights, black boots, gold tee. So Goldberg, you stole Austin's look. No, I'm not going to say he stole his look. Neither guy stole each other's look. But, Goldberg was a totally different character, totally different talent than Stone Cold Steve Austin. Um... I'm going to end this review very soon. I have people arguing in my house. Anyways, uh, Goldberg, Stone Cold, Steve Austin. I don't know if they have heat. I doubt it. But they might. Who knows? Hey, shut up. Be quiet. So anyways, uh, Goldberg, Stone Cold, Steve Austin. Broke is, uh, what the hell is I going to say? I'm, I'm getting pretty angry. Goldberg, thank, Goldberg thanks Sting and DDP, and I got to go. Hope you enjoy this Hall of Fame review. Bye for now.